Yo, 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 good people. Welcome to the Airman Show. Yo, 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 good people. It's your homie Erdman. Here you back upside the head with another hot banger boogie. Hey, look, go tell somebody to go tell somebody your homie Erdman is on. And if this is your first time tuning in to the Erdman Show, welcome. Go ahead and hit that logo right here at the bottom of your screen. And go ahead and hit that notification bell so that you never miss what we're bringing to the platform. All right, you guys. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys, to all, for all you guys' support. Today, we're going to be talking about breast cancer, all right, and how we can deal with that moving forward and some of the things that we can do. Now, guys, I, I do have to put this disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, okay, but I do have some helpful information, and hopefully this will help anyone out there that is dealing with breast cancer or trying to prevent it okay so what is breast cancer and what actually is going on inside of the breast and and all that type of stuff so breast cancer is basically a disease of the breast obviously uh the cancer originates in the tissues okay of the breast all right and it also originates uh from the lining of the milk ducts that are inside the breast as well. So some of the symptoms that you may start to uh, 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 experience can be, you know, pain in your armpits, um, pain in the breast, skin irritation. Sometimes the nipples can turn inward. Uh, sometimes they could change the nipple skin texture. Uh, you can see some swelling in the nipples. Uh, you got lumps under your underarm area, lumps in the breast. Uh, swelling in the armpits. Anytime you start seeing little knots and stuff like that in your armpits, you guys definitely want to start, uh, you know, just being on alert. Uh, if you're having discharge out of your breast outside of breast milk, that could also be some tall tale signs that you may want to go and get your breast checked out. Uh, obviously, there could be, uh, you know, thickening of the breast skin, uh, inflammation in the breast, uh, all that type of stuff, soreness in your breast. Uh, those are just some of the few symptoms that you really want to be uh, on high alert about when you're talking about your breast. Um, and there are also, too, you want to keep the breast warm as you possibly can. And this can also elude to maybe doing some type of breast massaging. Uh, you know, simply just, you know, go in one way, you know, for a few minutes and then rotate and go into the other way. For a few minutes and then what this does is just increase the blood circulation in the breast and just keep blood flowing through that and that's pretty much what you want to do you don't really want to have your breast cold and you know haven't been really utilized and all that type of stuff because you know um it, it could just wreak havoc when you're talking about something growing in that area a lot of times it's just due to stagnation uh, so we want to be careful uh just 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 in the preventive phase, just some of the things that you could do just to try to prevent it, okay? Um, again, normally the cells divide in a regular manner, um, but when you're dealing with any type of cancer, it don't matter what the cancer is, it's the un uncontrollable division of cells, you guys. That's really what's going on, whether it be in your colon, your stomach, your ear, your nose, it don't matter where it's at. We all have cells in every part of our body, and we all know that cells do divide, and then they do uh, die off, which is what we call apoptosis. But when you have an uncontrollable division in a certain area, in a certain organ or tissue, it can really be detrimental uh, to everybody out here. So we definitely want to be, uh, 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 you know, on alert of that. Now, so what are some of the things that cause breast cancer? And this is kind of where we can go back and forth. Um, but again, it could be due to old age, because again, remember, I'm saying that no one is really you know, no, no energy has really been going in this area. So, you know, if you're over a certain age and you may be not being sexually active or you may not be really utilizing your breast any longer, uh, then, you know, that's that cold and that's that stagnation that can start to formulate. So that's why we want to do those exercises. And no matter how old you are, you definitely want to do those exercises as much as possible just to keep the warmth and the energy going in that area. Again, also obesity, 
okay and being overweight can also uh cause some some issues there it could also happen to you genetically um you know you can just formulate lumps in the breast it really doesn't have to be a reason other than you know it's just a lump formulated and we have to do something about it uh you can also uh, uh um a cause of breast cancer could also be um uh, high acidity in your metabolism okay is when you're not getting a proper balance of alkaline and acidic stuff in your in your diet and so alkalining or alkalizing your body is going to be really one of the top things that you're going to have to do when you're actually dealing with breast cancer but uh even more importantly on the preventive stage you can still maintain a you know proper balance of acidic to alkaline so that you're very neutral because again this really thrives in an acidic environment okay in an acidic environment um if you're doing high estrogen types of things uh, that has high amounts of estrogen in it and being exposed to all of that estrogen could really wreak havoc and start to uh, uh, promote growth in, in your breast. And that's definitely not what you want. So you definitely want to lower your estrogen intake and you want to get off and around things that are doing that. Um, if you have uh, dense breast tissue, when you start filling in there and you can start feeling uh, some hardness and stuff like that, that may be signs that you want to go and get that 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 checked out okay because that should not be there uh radiation exposure guys if you're just going and getting x-rays all the time that's not good as well okay and radiation in the atmosphere is not good as well when dealing with breast cancer okay so these are some of the things that can cause it again inherited gene mutation all right so genetically you can get it or when you're talking about gene mutations now this goes back to some of the other things we were talking about as far as the food is concerned uh, we're getting uh, these processed foods and these hyper processed and hyper hybrid foods and GMO products and we're putting them into our bodies and again these are the UFOs and they come in and they start to mess with our um, our bodies in so many different ways and they actually start to be in, uh, endocrine disruptors and what that happens is that starts to make your gene mutate okay and start doing other things autoimmune issues cancers all type of stuff so when your genes mutate you got to think about that from in the cellular format uh, they can do whatever they want to do so again the proliferation of growth within your breast and you can't stop it because it's now uncontrolled that's what you want to look out for also to hrt so that's hormone replacement therapy that could also cause uh some some issues with your breast so you want to be careful if those are some of the things that you're doing now if you don't treat uh, breast cancer if you don't catch it and treat it obviously you can have you know metastasis uh lymphedema chest pain uh or you'll you know do basically mess up your breast you know you could really really wreak havoc on your breast and you pretty much have to get them cut off um if you don't do what you need to do now obviously there is a big uh thing out there about is is there cures is there a way to help is there a way to heal and i'm here to tell you yes there are and there are some herbs that you could really really uh utilize to help some of these symptoms and also uh there are regimens lifestyle regimens that you could utilize to prevent which is our number one thing is to prevent breast cancer from even touching you from even getting into your area and it's just all about what we're eating what we're putting into our bodies but as you can see when i was talking about the causes that is also going to be about your environment okay and it's also going to be about you know just making sure that as you age as a woman that you continue to understand that the breasts are, are, are you know are still useful they may not be able to feed a baby they may not be able to please your husband but they're still part of your body and it still needs to be massaged and energy still needs to be there. They still need to feel like they're being utilized. Because if, if anything on your body feels like it's not being utilized, it will die off just like everything else. So we want to be careful about that and just keep energy in that area uh, when we're dealing with that and just as a precautionary matter. Now, some of the herbs that are super effective, okay, super effective for dealing with breast cancer are going to be a herb called cleavers okay another one is garlic you can make your garlic paste okay and just rub it on the breast it's not going to 
you know, you're not going to smell good, you know, and all that type of stuff. But, I mean, you, you, you're either going to be dealing with the smell or you're going to be dealing with no breast at all. So you really just got to understand that when you're at that point where you need to utilize herbs, there really shouldn't be any type of, you know, uh, judgment about nothing but getting yourself healed. Um, another one is soursop. Soursop is a very good herb for breast cancers specifically. Uh, you got sweet wormwood, which is another very good herb for breast cancers. Um, we have a lot of these herbs on our site, you guys. So feel free to go and check them out on loveherbman.com. All right. Now, I'm, like again, I'm not a doctor or anything like that. So you guys definitely want to do your research on some of these herbs I'm talking about. Now, marijuana has also been proven to be very effective when dealing with breast cancer. Now, I know a lot of people may say, well, I don't want to deal with marijuana, but now because of CBD and all this type of stuff, you can get the actual medicinal properties of marijuana inside of your body, and hopefully that could help with any type of breast cancer issues, as well as getting that oil. You can rub it on your body and allow it to just absorb through the skin and get it that way. Remember that our skin is a very absorbent organ and is our biggest organ on our body so we can actually just put it on the spot and it'll still be able to be highly effective in that way and that's why we were talking about the garlic paste and all that because you can basically just put it on there and obviously you can drink you some garlic or you can eat you some garlic but garlic is also garlic has to be a mainstay when we're talking about any type of virus or any type of vampire type of cells in our bodies trying to leech off of us you want that garlic you know just like in the movies you want that garlic to get those uh get those things out of the way uh burdock root is going to be very good to cleanse the blood when you're talking about uh any type of cancers burdock root is going to be good uh you got camilla sinensis all right which is green tea uh, that's going to be good because that's going to help the obesity and the weight loss and all that type of stuff and really kind of, you know, uh, uh, holistically get you back into where you need to be. Now, I do have a um, uh, a what we call a remedy. OK, but again, you guys, if you're dealing with breast cancer, you definitely want to talk to your physician about what you're dealing with, about some of the things you're going through and about your intentions moving forward. I mean, if you uh looking at these herbs and you're like hey i want to you know kind of start to implement these herbs within my regimen that i'm already dealing with if you're already dealing with breast cancer you definitely want to talk to your physician and just to make sure that none of these herbs are going to be country uh, addictive to the uh, medications that you're currently on all right but uh if you're not taking anything and you do want to look for alternative methods then there is one uh, you could do equal parts red clover, cleavers, gota kula, and violet leaf, wild violet leaf. Okay, those are your four herbs. Gota kula, wild violet leaf, cleavers, and red clover. Okay, and you can take those four and you can uh, mix them all up. Like I said, equal parts. So if you're going to do one teaspoon of one, do one teaspoon of the other. Okay, and that way all of them have the equal parts. If you're going to do one tablespoon, then do one tablespoon for all four of the herbs, mix them all up, and then take you one heaping teaspoon to a cup of boiling water. All right, let that infuse for about five to 15 minutes, and then you could drink three cups a day or more if you need to. Okay, and this is just not going to also be preventative, but it's also going to be. Um, uh, 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 very cure, uh, uh, curing uh, if you're dealing with these particular situations, okay? So again, I'm not saying that this is the holy grail for breast cancer altogether. I think that it is a accumulation of lifestyle change, implementing some herbs that will give you the same medicinal uh, value that that uh, your medications are giving you. I think you need to also implement foods that will also give you some medicinal value, you know, that um, that uh, you're going to need to really put that oomph inside of your body to just kill off and ward off all of these cancerous cells and also to kill the proliferation and the uncontrollable division of these things. You really want to kill that right there and nip it in the bud. Um, so, you know, foods like celery, kale, uh, fennel, radish, 
All of those things are going to be good. Walnuts are going to be good for you. Um, uh, apple cider vinegar is going to be good for you. Turmeric is going to be good for you. So all of those things, if you guys, you know, uh, uh, you know, even skull cap, another herb, skull, Chinese skull cap would be very good. But all of these things, you can rewind this video back and just write them all down. Do your research on them. Um, make sure you implement the massaging, the eating habits and the herbal supplements and hopefully this will help you guys when you're dealing with your breast cancer situations or even prevention of breast cancer all right so i didn't want to make this video long because i didn't need to i just wanted to make it strong all right so i'm your homie herb man i love you guys and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it and until next time peace love herb man yo 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 good people Welcome to the Airman Show.